Welcome to the Monday, August the 3rd, 2020 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky. Oh, you gotta unmute yourself, Liz. Liz, Liz Pritchett. Anna Smith. Steve Everett. And staff, Meredith Crandall. Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures? I will do it. Uh, let me, so I'm gonna, as everybody on here, except for maybe Jesse knows, I usually share my screen so that anybody who's watching over at Orca can see um, the login information. There we go. Can everybody see this? Yes. All right. Let me just zoom a little bit. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. All right, we're just going to do this. Um, okay. So, um, so I'm going to go down. People can't see Mike's contact information. Um, so due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to Addendum 6 to Executive Order 0120 and Act 92, the Design Review Committee is authorized to meet electronically um, and there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, the committee is providing public access to the meeting by hosting a video conference meeting, including both video and telephone access options over the Zoom platform. There's also the option to view live streaming of the meeting over Orca Media. All members of the design review committee have the ability to communicate at the same time during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if desired, participate in the meeting. If you're watching on Orca, you can join the meeting by downloading the Zoom platform and you can this link. No, is somebody, I'm gonna mute some people because there's some interference going on. Um, uh, so you can use this link to join or you can also call using this phone number here. Um, and in either of those options, here's the meeting ID and password. This information has previously been given to the public um, through our standard public hearing notices that are posted throughout the city, posted on the city website. Um, and you can also access instructions for how to get here on our pending applications page. So there's that link there. Um, if you have problems with access, um, please email me at mcrandall, C-R-A-N-D-A-L-L, -L, at Montpelier hyphen vt.org. Um, and if you have any difficulties, once you're in the Zoom meeting, um, you can use the chat function to raise those issues with me and I will help you as best I can. Um, you know, uh, Jesse, you're pretty much the only one on here tonight. We don't have, it doesn't look like we have any members of the public. Um, if somebody does log on, I'll, I'll go through this all again um, for them. But what we're going to do here with the DRC meeting um, is we'll get to your item on the agenda. Just like in the live, you know, in-person meetings, you'll have an opportunity to present your, um, your application and describe it. What I'm going to ask is that when you aren't talking, you mute yourself so that we don't have a lot of feedback. Um, if members of the public do end up logging in, then we're going to ask that you introduce yourself when you log in and um, and potentially even just by chatting with me via the chat function and then try and keep your questions or comments to two minutes um, at which time DRC members will then have a chance to ask you questions or take your questions and bring them to the applicant. Um, and of course the chair can always grant additional time in addition to those two minutes. Um, so in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, if I get notices via email or something that people just can't log in, then it's going to be continued to a time and place certain. Um, and as I said, we ask that you keep your microphones on mute when you're not speaking. 
We don't have anybody on the phone right now. If somebody does call in, there are ways to raise your hand, even if you're just on the phone. So let me know if that happens. And then finally, all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. I'll now hand this back over to Steve. And we don't have anybody in the waiting room. You're muted, Steve, if you're trying to talk. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda from the committee members? Um, I move to approve the agenda. I'll second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Liz. Hannah. And Steve. So the agenda is approved, so we can move forward to the first application uh, for 66 Main Street for Great American Enterprises. And I assume, Jesse, you're there to describe the application. Uh, I, I am, yes. Thank you all for making the time here uh, and coming out over uh, Zoom to have a meeting. Um, you all have, uh, may or may not have seen our uh, outdoor installation for Charlio's um, downtown. And uh, my, I kind of tasked my manager with um, going through the appropriate channels to figure out what needed to happen in order for her to activate that space and it seems like she may have missed some steps along the way. So I'm here to try to cover the bases with all of you and hope that, uh, hope that you like um, what we are calling the veranda, <laughs> um, which I think is obviously very funny only because Charlie O's is such like a, a biker kind of bar and the veranda seems totally hilarious and absurd. <laughs> um, so, re so what really what we're we're trying to do what we can to kind of keep business viable. Um, sales are down considerably, even with the extra space that we have been able to use outside there. Um, but at this at the same time, it's helpful to be able to kind of be able to operate Charlios safely during this time and i think a lot of people uh, have have enjoyed being able to come out and do that i think our staff is making sure that they are acting responsibly um admittedly i know that uh the activation is not as handsome as we would like for it to be and the and really the hope is that long term there may be a more permanent um play and that's kind of dependent on financial feasibilities we're still trying to figure out if if this works if it's problematic if you folks um like it or not and uh whether or not you know it's really working from a business standpoint, and like I said, um, even with this installation, sales are significantly lower than normal. Um, so the the idea here uh, is that we are, you know, we have our fenced off area, which right now is uh, snow, kind of like hazard fencing for uh, for for snow. Our our plan is to, um, you've probably seen some of the packet that I sent along. I hope that everybody has had a chance to look through it. Jesse, I can share screen so that people can see it if you want me to pull that up. Oh, okay. That seems like it would be would be helpful. Okay. Um, if you could pull up the the detail for um, our, our fake foliage while I'm kind of talking through that. Yep. The the idea is to kind of make that make that snow fencing look a little bit 
less like snow fencing and m more like a, a garden space, though I realize it takes a it takes a little bit of imagination to to see that still. <laughs> is it sorry, uh Meredith, is that coming is that coming up? I yeah. don't see it on my end. Do you guys oh. all see that? No. No. Uh, okay, so hold on. Let me try again. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Your screen. Oh, there we go. I clicked the wrong one. That's why. Wow. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. So this is kind of a this is a, a cut sheet detail of uh, what this um, what this ivy is is meant to look like. And so the idea is we're you know we're gonna if if you all approve we're gonna purchase some of this to um, to go around um, the perimeter of the space here so that uh, it, you know it cut it kind of covers that that fencing that is there and looking particularly temporary and make it look a little bit uh, more purposeful is that poison ivy <laughs> don't yeah don't that's the idea don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's poison ivy. That's what I, I'm going to put. A, I, I'm going to tell everyone it's poison ivy so they don't mess with it. <laughs> um, so right. So we we plan to we plan to put to put that up ar around the around the perimeter. Um, we have a, we have kind of an archway that is up front now as a, as a entry to the space to kind of so. Uh, bartenders can check IDs and kind of deal with crowd control there because right now it's one entrance in, one in, uh, and a separate entrance out. You know, try to try to keep travel uh, appropriate and safe. Um, and then the the last uh, addition, at least for for this um, kind of what we're calling Veranda 1.0 here, is. Uh, some lighting, and I uh, was in Burlington at Daedalus, the wine bar there, and they put together what I thought was kind of really smart, uh, temporary, a temporary solution for lighting that didn't affect the site. And since we are kind of working from a, a temporary standpoint here before we uh, come to come back to you with a more permanent application, depending on how successful uh, the outdoor space is. Uh, the thinking was uh, this barrel and pole and post situation, um, those barrels are filled with sand, so they're incredibly heavy. You would have to be monstrously strong to to move those, but at the same time, the sand can be removed and then the barrels can be taken off site. The, the point there being that we don't have to affect the site in any kind of physical way. Um, and that, you know, that's the, that is the idea there. Um, below, and if you, if you scroll down further, uh, our, the sent, the, we had, oops, sorry, I can't hear you. Are you going to have to install any extra power lines or plugs or anything for the lights? No, so the, there, will, there will be uh, an extension cord uh, from the rear of the bar that will activate the lights uh, during service, but that extension cord is going to be... Um, kind of plugged in and un unplugged and, and brought back into the bar every evening. So we there won't be any need for additional power. Jesse, I was a little confused when I saw the archway. That, sure. that looks to me like the back of the black door. Is it, it, is exact, it is exactly that. That also <laughs> is our space. So I, I commandeered that while nobody oh. was using the black door. Okay. So... Yeah. So that's exactly been moved right. Is, has that been moved into the space that you want it then? It is. It's right. It's uh, people can walk through it from the sidewalk on Main Street at this point. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I had I had uh, 
I had talked to Ben Cheney about uh, using one of um, one of his sculptures here as kind of the central post because we'll need one post in the in the middle to be kind of the tallest of the post to to hold the lights up in that canopy shape. We're still trying to figure out exactly how moving that to the site is done because it turns out that those are pretty uh, pretty difficult to move they're they're heavy but we're still working on on that i thought also thought it would be nice to have kind of a you know a piece of art that people had seen around town kind of a public activation as part of uh the space so that is why i included those um kind of in the visuals here You said that you consider this to be sort of a temporary thing. How long into the fall or the winter do you expect to be there? Uh, at, at this point, I don't, I don't foresee us um, staying there longer than the end of October. Okay. Um, we have, yeah, at this point, that is, that's the proposed cutoff, unless for some reason, November seems to be unseasonably warm, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, it's Vermont. That seems pretty unlikely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's through, so temporary through the end of October. Okay. And we, you know, at that point, at that point we're it's a little unclear how people are going to feel about getting together inside, you know, and especially with a small space like Charlio's, how we're going to, you know, keep everybody, patrons feeling safe, but also staff feeling safe. I think it's kind of a, mo it's kind of a moving target. We're, and we're not the only ones mm -hmm. who are thinking about how that piece works. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure, I, you know, outside ends probably at the end of October, and then we'll see how people feel about about coming in coming inside at this point we're only allowing people inside uh to use restrooms even though uh there you know you can have 25 percent capacity inside what we have found is that people were generally just being badly behaved about social distancing i i don't think that a, a bar is a very good place to socially distance people don't go there for that reason so that's so we're we're trying to figure out what that means. Um, and I guess as far as far as the temporary nature of this application, um, I kind of I went over kind of the I guess the particulars of what it is for now, and I, I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping that you uh, that you all understand the reasoning behind some of the kind of cost-effective measures that that we're taking here. But the hope really is that if it's working, we can activate the space in a way that is kind of more permanent and also fe feels more permanent. You know, pro proper proper fencing. Uh, proper lighting, appropriate signage. You'll notice there's uh, there's not signage as part of this application. I think for now we're just going to be using a, a sandwich board um, uh, and uh, and an open flag. But the, the hope is if this is something that that people like and we can do safely and in a way that is respectful of neighbors then maybe it does become something more permanent and um so i will i will likely come back again with that idea if this is working jesse just one quick question i sure, assume, Steve. i assume the barrels would be located within the perimeter of the fencing they would that's correct yes okay just to clarify yeah, no, that was a that was a good that was a good clarification. I should have I, I should have shown that on a diagram. No, that's fine. Does anyone else, any of the other committee members, have any questions, comments, or suggestions? I think I enjoy this there.
I'm sorry, Eric, did you have a, a no, comment? I'm good. Oh, okay. If nobody else has anything to add, I can go down through the criteria on the, on the recommendation form. Evaluation criteria number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. I would say in this particular case, that's not applicable. Number two, harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Number three, compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Number four, compatibility of proposed landscaping. The temporary fence is acceptable in this particular application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, specifically the lighting, acceptable. Recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Again, this temporary installation is acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your name. Eric. Martha. Liz. Anna. And Steve. So the application is approved. Thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank all of you. I really appreciate it. Well, good work. You're welcome. We appreciate everyone's effort to uh, maintain some kind of level of business in town. We are, we are trying. Yeah. No. Thank thank you for that for that understanding. Yeah. Um, Meredith, will this be administratively approved? Yeah. This is an administrative permit. We'll need to finish up the administrative site plan report. Um, but we just that's just paperwork. We need to finish that up and get this out to you. So give me give me a, a, a few days. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you, Jesse, and good luck with your project. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you all, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. welcome. Jesse, bye-bye. And the next item is for us to review the meeting minutes of July the 20th. Has everyone had a chance to look at those? Does anyone have any comments regarding the minutes? M Meredith, I found a typo or a oh. small error yeah. in, in the first, in the 34 Berry Street application. It's in the paragraph that says it was considered a non-contributing structure. The last word in that line where it says it, that should be left out. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Oh, yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other suggestions or comments? Well, I wasn't at that meeting, so I probably shouldn't comment. But I did look it up. I thought it was a contributing structure in the historic district. I mean, it was built, it's, you know, pretty simple, but... Um, anyway, I think well, what was decided at the meeting because I wasn't able to be there, but I think that they they did say that it was a contributing structure that it was oh, changed think, in 1947. It started as non-contributing when it was first very first yes. listed, and then is now classified as a contributing. Oh, correct. Okay, I misunderstood what 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 Martha said. Thank you. Okay. No, my correction list was just on the grammar. Yeah. Sure. I was, yeah. uh, we still have enough to approve because uh, Martha, Eric, and Steve are all at that meeting. Yeah. I move to accept the minutes from the July 20th meeting. We that Do, Do I hear a second? <laughs> Eric, would you like to second? Yeah, we lost his sound. I can see him mouthing second. 
Okay, we'll we'll accept that as a second. So all in favor of accepting the minutes, speak your name. Martha. Steve. And we heard we heard a little noise from Eric, so that we assume that's accepting. You can raise your hand, Eric, and it'll show up. Yes, awesome. Does anyone else have any other comments or other business at this point? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Hold on, hold on. Okay. In, the, Go ahead. In, the other, in the other business, just a reminder to everybody here and anybody who's watching on ORCA that the next design review committee meeting is going to be Tuesday, September 8th. So we all have about a little more than a month off. Um, but it's also, it's a Tuesday. It's the day after Labor Day. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I do Second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your name. Eric. Steve. Liz. Hannah. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.